I'm too happy that I have this opportunity to present the presentation uh, about forensic and anti-forensic for you. And thanks for, for introducing me. I'm a research assistant in Canadian Institute for Cybersecurity. So uh, today I'm going to talk about digital devices that we use every day and next about cyber attackers. And after that, I discuss about digital forensics. And at the end, I will discuss anti-forensics. And at the end, you can ask your questions. Thanks. So digital devices, as you know, every day, uh, most of us use different kinds of devices, such as uh, PC, such as laptops or uh, smart uh, phones to do different kinds of activities such as checking our social accounts or performing any financial transactions using the mobile uh, bank applications that we have. And uh, yes, uh, you know, all of these transactions provide some kind of data that somehow is important for us because of the security and privacy. But unfortunately, cyber attackers are interested in stealing the information that we have. They also want to compromise our systems and even they try to target different kinds of businesses. For example, two popular kinds of attacks that they use against businesses are denial of service and distribute denial of service that actually they try to put a heavy traffic on a specific server that uh, provide different kind of services that belong to that specific business. So unfortunately, it's not uh, po possible for consumers to use the specific service that is provided by that business. However, uh, uh, cyber attackers after targeting a business or compromising a system, it's mostly possible that they put some fingerprints behind, such as the traces that can be found in network traffic or list of executed processes in a system. So here, digital forensic games, and actually it's a set of techniques and tools that provide this opportunity for forensic investigations that is doing by forensic investigators to study these fingerprints and identify and collect digital evidence to provide a case against cyber attackers in court of Allah. But here we did discuss about, first of all, about uh, the digital investigators that actually perform the investigations. They must be trained and qualified based on different kinds of certifications that are available uh, in the world. Also, uh, the organization need to do digital investigation. First of all, it's important for them to uh, make a legal case against cyber attackers that impact their businesses. And also, it's very important to identify what happened before in an attack to prevent it in the future. But digital forensics have different areas such as memory forensics, that actually the memory of system will be investigated by investigators. Network forensics, that network lag will be examined by investigators. Mobile forensics, that mainly focus on smartphone devices. And video forensics, that main artifact is video. But uh, here generally steps of computer forensics have been mentioned. That first of, uh, first of all is readiness. Actually, uh, it's about uh, being ready for forensic investigators that they need to have uh, qualified and acquire specific uh, certificates before doing uh, investigation. Also, they need to uh, uh, test different kinds of devices and tools that they are going to plan to use in the investigation. And the next step is evaluation that actually is most about the roles and assignments that have been assigned to different kinds of members in forensic investigations. And next step is collection that actually this step means collections and acquisition because you know when they reach the place that cyber incidents happens, it's very important for them to collect any potential evidence that can be related to the attacks. For example, 
they should gather any kind of uh, uh, devices such as RAM or hard disk drive that can somehow can be related to cyber attacks or any other device, uh, uh, any objects such as papers or anything that somehow can be related to uh, attackers. And next, uh, they uh, pack these devices and acquire some emails from them and send them to digital forensics labs to analysis. And after that, when the investigators can examine and identify the evidence, it's very important that they provide a presentation for that. That this presentation will be provided in two version, in two cases, in two uh, uh, items. The first one is for court of law, and second one is there for organizations. Uh, but there are different kind of digital forensic certificate such as access data certified examiner or NCASE certified examiner. And the, uh, you know, access data uh, is a popular, uh, the producer of a uh, forensic environment. Also NCASE is a very popular uh, forensic framework for investigations. Uh, also another digital forensic certificate is certified forensic computer examiner. And another one is computer hacking forensic investigator. But uh, we talk about uh, uh, digital forensics, so it's important to talk more about gathering digital evidences. Actually, one of the tasks of the digi digital forensic evidence first responder is that to identify any potential evidence that can somehow can be collected and used against the attacker. So the first step is the identification of potential evidence. In the next step, they try to collect any potential evidence. And after that, you know, because in most cases of computer attacks, uh, there are digital devices that have somehow memory, such as RAM or hard disk. It's very important for them to be acquired and an image or dump have been acquired that can be analyzed later. And at the end, uh, you know, when the digital evidences have been examined, it's very important to preserve them in a secure place because these digital evidences will be used later by court of law. But for memory forensics, memory forensics is a major important area in digital forensics and in lets uh, digital investigators to examine different kinds of files that can be found in the compromise system, such as running processes or running executable files or other kind of information that can be catched from networks such as open ports or IP addresses. And even the list of logged in user and after that or open files. But as we discussed about, about the acquisitions, uh, the acquisition formats in memory forensics are different kind, such as raw format that uh, just an image from RAM will be uh, acquired by digital investigators. A crash dump that actually this crash dump is provided by operating systems. Hibernation file that is the status of RAM before the system goes to hibernation mode and actually the system will re recover it to filling the RAM after uh, getting uh, instructed to wake up from hibernation mode. Another one is page file that actually the content of this file is similar to content of RAM. So somehow it can be used as uh, a format in acquisitions step and VMware snapshots that is that is the latest status of VMware that can be uh, acquired by the possibility of taking a snapshot. But there are different kinds of tools and frameworks that provide the uh, opportunity to digital investigators to perform memory analysis or memory acquisition, such as volatility, that it's a great uh, tool uh, to examine the uh, memory image. Another one is recall that provides this opportunity for them to acquire or take image and also analyze the content of memory. Another one is Helix ISO that lets them to acquire an image from RAM or Belka soft RAM capture that provide this opportunity to identify the volatile parts of RAM that needs more attention by investigator. 
and process hacker that actually can be used when this compromise system is still running. So it provides a great knowledge about running processes on the system to investigators. And uh, anti-forensics. Unfortunately, there are a set of malicious techniques and tools that target digital forensics. Uh, they try to hide evidence or wipe evidence or even manipulate evidence that these evidence cannot be used by digital investigators in court of Allah. And unfortunately, they target a different area of digital forensics, such as memory forensics, mobile forensics, video forensics, image forensics, or network forensics. But in the conclusion, uh, hopefully digital forensics provide this opportunity for investigators to trace back attackers. And also this area uh, is getting more demanded regarding the increasing cyber crimes. And actually this area are still threatened by anti-forensics. Uh, thank you so much for your attention and I will be happy